Hey everyone, what is going on? Today I'm going to show you how you can create the logic for dropping the items with the UI we did in the last video. So please do that one before. I will link it in the video description. As always, here's the preview. As you can see, I click on the item and press E to open the drop window. There I can select the amount to drop or I can also just drop all. We will also do a simple trace loop that checks for space around the player to drop the items as you can see here. Back in our inventory system, open the WB inventory, go to the designer and inside here, search for the event drop all. We did this in the previous video. Go to the AC inventory and inside here we want a new function called remove item all. If you have the same problem as me here and you can't see the details, click on the details. If this doesn't work, go to the window, load layout and click on the default one. This fixed the issue for me before I recorded this video. Back to the code, add a string item name to the function. Then pull in the inventory and from that find the item name. And from that connect this to a branch. Save the found item into a local variable. And also break from this item and save the amount into local variable as well. After that, get a for loop. I will use one as the start value because it's a little bit easier to read for beginners. And the last index will be the drop amount. Zero and drop amount minus one should also work. Next, get the deleted item and set members in node. Then pull in the inventory, get an add node from it and plug in the item name. The struct out goes into the item spot. Next, let's work on the trace around to player. Create a function named try trace around, connect it to the add here and then add a vector parameter to the function. I call it position. After that, we want to use our function spawn item and connect the position and the deleted item class reference to it. After that, get the amount minus one and connect it to the amount in the set members node. Pull in the inventory again and search for remove. Connect it to the completed and add the item name. Then return it. Now let's work on the trace around. Pull in the connected actor, get from it the forward vector and then multiply the distance. So this will be 100 in front of us. Next, we create a function that will get the start and the end trace for our vector we give in. Call it something like a get a start end trace. Pull it in, create a parameter vector direction, and then connect the vector to it. Then inside the start end trace, we need a start output and we need a end output. Inside the get start end trace, we also need the connected player. From that, we want to get the mesh and then the world location. Add 100 on the z-axis to it. This will be our start trace. Connect the vector direction to the bottom one. From that node, add again uh, 100 to the z. This will be our endpoint. So this function gives us a trace with a length of 100 based on the direction we give in. Connect them to the output nodes. Back in the traceAround method, we get the sphere trace by channel and we connect the start and end node to it. Don't forget to set the radius and the draw debug. Break the out hit and create a branch from the return. If we didn't hit anything, we can use the trace end to spawn the item. If we hit, we try another direction. So just copy this all, paste it and change the vector to the right vector.
And then again for the trace behind, copy the forward vector, but this time add minus 100 to it. And the last one, copy and paste the uh, right vector and add minus 100. So this will be the trace to the left. At the end, we just want to use the impact point as the return value to spawn the item. This case only happens when our character is trapped and completely surrounded by objects. Depending on your game, you need to create another trace or restrict the dropping of the item here. But for this video, it's enough. Here's a small preview showing the trace. If we don't hit anything, it returns the trace end. If we hit something, it tries again with the other directions. Back to the inventory widget, we can now create the code to drop all of a specific item. Get here the player ref and from that the AC inventory. Then get our remove item all function. After that, get the inventory from the player and update the inventory inside here. Pull in the last click slot and the item container. And from that, get the remove child node. So after we dropped all items, we can safely remove the whole slot from the container. The content here will be the last clicked slot. Then we only have to set the visibility of the item info to hidden and set the last click slot to null. Here's a quick preview of that. Pick the items up, click on it, press E and drop all. Works nice. The last bit will be the drop by amount. So search for the event. Copy the player ref and the AC and then go into it. Inside here we create a new function called remove item by amount with the name and amount to drop as the input. We can copy the remove all function and modify it a little bit. Paste it and connect the item to the find. Then the local variable didn't get copied, so create a new one. Call it something like found item. This time we will use a zero as the start index and the amount to drop will be minus one as the last index. Then replace the inactive variables with the new created one. Search for the item, which is the variable that comes into this function. After we did the loop body, pull in an inventory again and get the find node from it. The find key will be again the item name that comes into this function. And from the found item, we want to break then. Check if the amount is equal to zero with a branch. If that's true, we want to remove the item from the inventory. Then we add an output to the function, which will be an item data reference. From the false branch, we want to return the updated item with a new amount. And if it's been removed, we want to give an empty item. Back in the inventory widget, we can now grab the function and plug the information in. After that, we want to update the inventory inside here with the inventory from the active component, which is our updated version. Then try to find the item in the inventory and check if we found it with a branch. If we didn't found it, we can safely move it from the SB item container.
And if we found it, we just want to update the information in our last click slot. And of course, we also want to remove the child. And then we want to update the item data. So connect that too. If you have an error like me inside the AC, it's because of the function we copied. And I did something wrong there. Maybe it's just a bug. However, to fix it, remove the found item, create it again from the plus icon. Pull it in and then don't forget to set it here. After that, you can safely compile again and it should work now. And one small fix here at the drop amount function. You actually want to set the visibility only if you remove the child and not when you only update the number. So switch that up. So here it is. Pick up some items, go to the wall and then let's drop two items first. As you can see, this works just fine. And that's all for this video. Again, a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but we also did quite a lot here. So yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.